the hours and minutes after the initial launch, we saw the render, which was, uh, from what I can see, a really detailed one. Lots of stuff on there you wouldn't expect on a team's render, a lot of technical detail. Uh, but we've seen the car roll out of the, uh, the garage at Fiorano, and as far as we can see, it's exactly the same. There's no you know, hidden exciting bits coming out of the real car. So I think we can take the, the render at face value and make our judgments off that. But I think the biggest problem is when I first reposted on social media, the pictures of the render, everyone's going, yeah, but that was an early version of the car. You know, that's not the car that we're going to see. And it's like, well, maybe that's the problem. The car doesn't look, um, it's, a, it's a radical evolution from what they had last year. But the car they've produced this year, to me, actually looks like a 2023 car. It just doesn't look like they've taken the things to the extremes that everyone else is doing. Um, so, you know, first guess is, is that this maybe isn't the step that Ferrari were looking at. Having said that, they ended last year in a very good position. Um, they'd found a lot with time management and getting the car to be balanced. And again, the things that we can't tell from renders... And, um, you know, Lapsura and Fiorano is what's actually happening with the car, particularly with the floor, which is the most important thing that we simply, we can't judge that uh, at this stage. But um, again, I, I am slightly uh, disappointed with, with what we saw on the SF24. I mean, if we were to take a 30,000 foot view of the Ferrari last year, you'd say pretty good in top speed pretty good high speed braking, pretty good on circuits with long straights, going into tight corners, probably not brilliant in terms of overall downforce from circuit mm -hmm. to circuit as shown up by the differential between Ferrari and Red Bull. Have they, I mean, would they have been focusing on just trying to get more downforce out of the car without in any way touching what is already quite good about it? And do you think they might have pulled that off? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the changes, obviously, there's changes in the floor that we can't see. What we can see is that secondary effect of what they've done with side pods. And they have potentially found a whole heap of performance from those side pods getting the floor to work better. So, yes, you would say that that works uh, much better for them. I think the other thing that Ferrari really struggled with last year, which is probably to do with their lack of downforce, was tyre management. And although they did improve through the season, in coping with that, I think they still had an underlying issue that came back to bite them at various races. Um, what's interesting is that Ferrari haven't really substantially changed the, the outboard parts of the suspension, front and rear, from what we can see. So there's no geometrical or big geometrical changes to the, the suspension. So hopefully they've found other, other ways of getting the, uh, the tyres to work better, particularly in the race. You know, they qualify really well um, but that is always the other side of the coin to uh, tyre performance. If you qualify well, typically you race worse. And last year, you know, Red Bull are quite open that they really didn't have that one lap performance on the tyres, but we saw their race performance. They were just completely in control of those Pirellis. So again, you know, we have to start to question, uh, um, you know, what a Ferrari finding uh, in this car without making big obvious changes that this, to this point we we can't see. Although Fred Vasseur did say most of the changes were under the skin. So you're talking about inboard suspension, you know, like the shape of the, the underfloor and stuff like that. So, you know, we can we can only judge what we can see at this stage. There has been in the, in the past couple of years quite a lot of talk about all the details like mirrors and roll hoops and things like mm -hmm. that. Can we get down to details like that? Are you also saying you're a bit disappointed in those details or have we got some fresh detail improvements on the Ferrari we can get excited about? Well, I mean, there, as with all of these cars, there are a few little details that you would say maybe, you know, certainly aren't primary or secondary importance in terms of um, uh, getting lap time out of the car. But there's some interesting bits. Well, Ferrari have gone for a wider nose. I thought people were going to shape the nose much more this year, trying to get much more of an aerodynamic effect. But I think what a lot of teams are doing are making the nose much flatter, much wider in order to get the, you know, the crash performance out of it. And that really plays around with the uh, the pressure where the nose meets the trailing edge of the front wing. And this is something that Red Bull really got worked out, putting rotation into that airflow going towards the floor. And Ferrari have moved that direction slightly. As you kind of move back down the car, you know, so the front suspension is all very similar. Um, One of the curious things is uh, around the side pod fronts and the halo. So the side pod fronts have gone for what we call the underbite, where you don't have a, a top closure to the side pods. And actually, Looking at the geometry of that, they don't look especially 
higher or a narrower inlet than they had last year, just because literally looks like they've just cut the top off. But what they have done is they've moved the side impact structure, which used to be inside the side pods, and actually you had a little bump sticking out of the Ferrari last year. They've moved that now down to the floor where everyone else has it, and that allows them to put a really big undercut into that side pod. And that is really where the performance now starts to come because they're working the floor edge, the front half of the floor edge much harder, which gives them a lot much more downforce and a much more balanced downforce because it's creating downforce almost at the center of gravity in the middle of the car. So that's one big change that almost kind of goes unnoticed. Um, and that what that then does is creates a very large undercut on the side pod. And of course, the airflow has to go a long way around there to get to the back of the car. And one of the problems that you have, and this is you know, one of the, the, the small benefits Mercedes have with the zero pod, is that you get airflow build up along that, that stretch of bodywork. It's called, we call the boundary layer, and the airflow gets thicker and it creates more and more problems. Ferrari last year had this S duct where they had a little inlet cutting off that area. And that kind of stuck, makes that section of bodywork much shorter by skimming off the initial boundary layer. They've kept that this year. And that exits again just behind the halo. But this year they've worked that with a little fairing around the halo, similar to some of the things they did last year, but you know, slightly different uh, in, in work. And that halo fairing basically is just trying to create low pressure behind that S duct outlet, which just means you get a much cleaner airflow around the, the undercut of the side pod and also just gives you a bit more uh, low pressure airflow going over the cooling outlets at the back of the car. So that's all kind of quite interesting. Um, with the side pods, what they haven't done is gone for the big gullies, the big water slides that we saw was a big feature of so many cars last year, particularly Gaston Martin. But, you know, Alpine had already worked that out last year. Lots of teams followed it. And that kind of worries me because the, the shape of the side pods now is becoming one of the kind of the, the secondary defining features beyond the floor and suspension. And everyone is trying to get much more airflow down to the diffuser by putting these gullies into the side pods and Ferrari haven't gone quite extreme with that and they can see no reason why they wouldn't have so you kind of think you know what's in their mind why aren't they playing about with this and it's not because of cooling because nowadays the side pods the volume of the side pods is so much bigger than they need to be because they're using the shape of the side pods to partly replicate what barge boards used to do by keeping the front tire wake away from the rest of the car and again, you just think, you know, Ferrari uh, just feel like they're a step behind what everyone else is doing. Now, the work they've done over the winter is massive because they've kind of gone away from their old bathtub side pods and the big cooling louvers and all of that. But they don't seem they're kind of caught up what everyone was doing early last year rather than what everyone was doing by the end of last year. And as we've seen with the Aston, you know, pe people are getting even more extreme in, in the shapes and the... Uh, the volumes that they're using these areas so yeah i'm i'm wary of ferrari thinking that they can aim for championships with this car because it looks to me as though they're going to launch this car run with it for the first handful of races and then probably produce a big update to it and that's not how you win championships you've got to be ready at first race especially if you're fighting against red bull now mm -hmm. and you've got to expect a resurgence from mercedes mclaren are looking very strong aston martin are there or thereabouts you can't afford to give away a handful of races at this stage of the season uh, and expect to win a championship. But um, having said that, you know, um, depending on the level of Red Bull superiority, I see no reason Ferrari wouldn't be competitive with with their rivals. But I just don't know if they've closed that gap to Ferrari quite as much as they need to. The back of the Ferrari looks very similar to last year. There's nothing really massively different. You've still got the rear. Uh, pull rod suspension, they've got the same sort of geometry from what we can see so far. Again, looking at the rear wing itself, it's very hard to judge anything from renders because a rear wing, they really won't make a very complicated rear wing on a render. But yeah, you've got to remember, for Red Bull have another advantage with their rear, rear wing, particularly when it comes to the DRS performance. Red Bull went into last year knowing that they had the potential to get pole position to be a very fast car which meant that they could dominate the race and kind of set, set the race pace as they wanted to, just as Mercedes had done before. When you know you can do that, you can then start to make some big compromises in the car's design that you couldn't do if you know you're going to have to fight for position. So if you're on pole, you know that you can pull away at the front, look after your tyres, set the pace, and if you need to overtake someone, you can have DRS. 
So you can afford to throw away a whole heap of top speed by putting a big DRS flap on there. And that's what Red Bull were able to do last year. And when Red, the DRS opened, it gave them a huge performance, almost like you see with the new F2 car with that massive flap at the back of the car. Now, other teams can't necessarily afford to do that. They can't afford to give up their straight line performance because they know they're going to be in a fair fight with so many other cars. So it's not always obvious just to copy what the lead team are doing in that area. You need to understand why they're able to get away with that and see if that applies to you. And I would imagine in most teams' cases, they're not able to do so. Um, beam wings are a slightly different thing. I think everyone now is moving away from a two-element beam wing to almost like a full biplane. So they're much, uh, much more highly loaded, much more liable to stall when DRS opens. And that's kind of free performance. And I think everyone went that way through last year. And I think everyone will follow that direction this year. So I don't see anything at the back of the Ferrari that's really kind of giving away, um, you know, any, any huge advantage. Having said that, because they've stuck with the rear pull rod, they are giving away some width in the rear diffuser tunnels, which uh, we've seen you know, Aston Martin switch away from. Um, and again, one of those things, why, why wouldn't they have kind of taken up that advantage? Why are Ferrari holding back in, in some areas? So, yeah, I think it's it would be good to be very wary of Ferrari, not jump on any kind of hype train too early about looking at what is actually a very attractive looking car. I just I don't know if the performance is, is underlying that. 